You're listening to the really useful podcast, the tech podcast for technophobes. Hi there, my name is Christian Corley from MakeUseOf.com and joining me this week on the show is Ben Stegner. Hey Ben, how are you doing? Hey Christian, good to see you. It's been uh, several months since we talked, so yeah. it's good to be back. Yeah, a lot has happened in the world since then. That's true. Um, <laughs> if you're listening to this in the future, just check your history books. Now, I should say before we start um, that it is late October where I am in the UK, which invariably means people are letting off fireworks. So if you hear explosions in the background... I am not in a war zone. It's just people practicing for Guy Fawkes Night, which is on the. I was going to say, yeah. is that the fifth of November? The 5th. Yeah. So that's people do like. it that early. Oh, any ex- come on, it's fireworks. You know what people are like. Okay, any excuse yeah. for fireworks. Typically here, it's only it's New Year's, obviously, and then Fourth of July. Occasionally, I'll get it during like Labor Day or something. But right. typically, when you, when you when you hear fireworks, if it's not like around July Fourth or around the end of the year, I wonder what's going on. But. Yeah. Sometimes you just you just want to set them off. It's just fun too. Totally, yeah. Well, sometimes here, if they've bought too many for Guy Fawkes, then they they they, they they'll um, plan some for New Year's. Yeah, um, that's perfect. <laughs> but if they've bought, if they've still overbought, then what they do? They end up having Boxing Day fireworks as well. Okay. Like, any excuse. So um, this week's really useful podcast. We're looking at video games now there's kind of a tierage with video games isn't there there's the kind of there's the triple a expensive video games and then there's the trying to play video games for as little money as possible and that's kind of what we're going to be looking at today there are this is a wide range of conversation we've got a whole list of things that we're planning to talk about which we you know we may miss some of these things out um sure anything that we do talk about will be found in the show notes so just check below where you found this podcast for the links and they'll educate you further on um, the various options that you have um i think what i will will start off by saying what I'll, I'll ask you a question what is the best value game that you've ever played in terms of how much it cost you and how much you got out of it i've ever played probably just based on that probably overwatch because i bought it I th- I, th- I don't remember if I bought it for full price or if it was half off, but either way, I, if I bought it for full price, it was $60 and I bought it four years ago. It came out in 2016 and I got into it like a few months later. So I've played a lot of that game and I never paid anything for it except for the initial cost. So probably Overwatch, but there have been a lot of games that I've played like over the years like that, but probably just hours to price Overwatch would be number one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, That's a tricky question. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I mean, this is part of the thing, isn't it? This is, you know, you have your investment in the hardware, then you have the investment in the game, and then if it's a good game, you've got the time investment, and if it's a really good game, then you multiply that time investment. So a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, which I got almost two years ago this month, and have just finished, that's right. kind of, okay. you know, that, there's, that's done all right for itself. There's been a lot of side missions and stuff, off the storyline exploring and you know i spent two years playing that game and i got to the end of the storyline and i still got 10 percent of the world to explore so there's still something to play there but then again you could go back further to something like half-life 2 which i got the week it came out in 2000 and whatever it was and i know i had i dipped into it earlier this year and now that cost about 35 40 quid when i bought it so that's you know break that down over the years it's pennies but sure. then again the hardware the Xbox One, three hundred pound, four hundred dollars. What, what's an Xbox in the US now at the moment? Um, I don't know about now. When it launched, it was four hundred, but it depends oh. on the model. I think you can get an Xbox One S for three hundred. Okay. Let me see what it says on Amazon right now. Xbox One S, one terabyte, is three hundred dollars. Got it. So there you go. And then yeah. Red Dead Redemption Two, what, fifty foot, sixty dollars? Sixty dollars is a full price game. So, yeah. yeah. So and that breaks down over two years. That's a lot more outlay compared with a. Uh, PC bought in, bit or built in two thousand and six, and then a game installed on it a year later. Or roughly, I'm talking roughly here. So you know, this is the whole thing with gaming and affordable gaming. It can be very cheap. It can break down to pennies per 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 year, even in some cases. But on the other hand, you can be looking at an outlay that's quite high, but gives you so much entertainment that you actually don't mind. Now, 
we're going to try and stick to the lower end so we're probably not going to be talking about too many AAA games certainly not AAA games that have been released in 2020 but i'm going to take a look to give you an example of the sort of thing that we'll be talking about and get us in the mood so one of the things we can look at are turn-based strategy games that's the ice machine and um turn-based strategy games are things um where you take a turn, the computer takes a turn, or if it's multiplayer, you take a turn, the computer takes a turn, or the player takes a turn, play four, play takes a turn, etc. And there's all manner of turn-based strategy games that are available free. Now we have a great list of ten. I'm going to just look at a couple of these. One of them is Free Civ, which is a free version of Civilization. Uh, you may have heard of Civilization Six or Five or Four or Three or Two. Free Civ is a version of Civilization Two, which is freeware and it's been going since 1996 and it gets a few updates every few years and it really looks very much like civilization 2 only kind of a bit sort of fresher and more modern if the civilization games are the sort of thing that you're interested in these expansions expansive forex games you explore and expand and uh, cause other civilizations become extinct um if you like then that's one to look at it, it is a really top game and it is free and the link will be in the show notes now there's a few other things there's the battle for west north and these are all largely kind of strategic militaristic games of turn-based games not all but the, these turn-based strategy ones are colonist is another one which is based on settlers of Catan. there's also a free um version of risk which i didn't know about this and my son's absolutely obsessed with the doctor who version of risk so i don't think i've have only played risk like once or twice but i have seen the like the versions that tie in with whatever show or yeah. movie or something that's that's pretty clever when they come up with that the the um the doctor who one's really good it's basically um daleks fighting each other which happens loads in doctor who anyway so it's um yeah that it, it's totally canon if you're listening dot two fans um so i mean that's an example of the thing we're looking for there are so many free games out there but, and I think this is perhaps the most important thing, it's very difficult to know where to look, isn't it? Yeah. So f- Because free can mean, it, depending on what you've grown up with or what you expect, free can mean crappy or it can mean yeah. like mobile games that want to nickel and dime you everywhere. But yeah. there are a lot of good free games that aren't either of those. You just have to know where to look, you're right. Yeah, totally. So for instance, there's, there's games like... Um, PUBG, that's free, isn't it? And it's it's on all the consoles. Pub, PUBG is not free, but, but Fortnite, Fortnite is, Apex Bank Legends Bank. is, yeah. and the, the newer Call of Duty. So, um, yeah, those games. Battle Royale, right. oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, not PUBG. The, the other games that like the Fortnite, etc. They're free, and they're all available on the consoles, and they're all available on Steam, and they're free to play. I think they're on they're on Android now as well, aren't they? I think so, yeah. yeah. Pretty, Again, I don't know if Apex is, but Fortnite is. Yeah, so so games like that, they're free and they're available on pretty much any platform. So there's some games that you can go on and play. And I was going to ask you, Ben, have you ever played um, Fortnite? I played Fortnite when it was new. Not not like brand new, but when it was first getting popular, I guess. Um, I had a group of friends I was playing with fairly regularly at the time, um, and we tried it. I... That was probably the first Battle Royale game I played because I didn't play PUBG, and I I still don't really care for Battle Royale games. I just They can be fun for a little bit, but I don't mm. find them super engaging over a long period of time. So I've played it, but it's been forever. All the changes they've made are, I'm not familiar with. Okay, yeah, I've never played it. I don't... Um, I've, the old um, Counter-Strike games kind of put me off the entire whole whole idea of multiplayer killing each other. Um, oh okay. And the the um, I don't even like playing the ones on uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two either. They I, I just it tends to be a case of walk out, get shot, wait. Yeah, I think it really depends on the game because I've had that experience too. My when I was younger, like a teenager, my my dad and my uncle got into Call of Duty when it was like when multiplayer was first getting big. So for years, that was like the multiplayer game I knew. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's a lot of that in that game, like people being cheap and like, you know, sitting in a corner and things like that. Yeah. So you, you start to feel like, you know, walk out, get shot and you never get any better. Um, it just depends on the game. I think cause there's, it can go either way. You know, there's some games like overwatch that are so team based that it's, it can get really frustrating when someone on your team yeah. is not good enough. And then there's some games like battlefield where it's like 32 on 32, where you feel like such a small part of the match you feel kind of insignificant so it can go either way i think 
Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, so, as I say, those are examples of free games. This, but I mean, this is really, and this is important. This is the tip of the em- of the tip of the empire. That's the new Star Wars film. Um, no, this is the um, tip <laughs> of the iceberg. And as Ben alluded to, there are free games on Android, what's and on iPhone as well. What that's you know they're very much like you play for a few minutes and then you have to pay for the rest. And we're not talking about those types of games. If you were to um, ch- check on your consoles, you will find a bunch of free games. A lot of them are online games, and a lot of them uh, require you to pay a bit more later on. But then if you were to sort of say you have an Xbox and you've got games with gold, then you have the opportunity to get three free games every month. And yeah, you could say, well, they're not free because you're paying a subscription, but your subscription is pretty low compared with the number of games that you can get per month and keep. And there's similar um, systems on the other platforms, isn't there? That's right. Yeah. So with, if you're not familiar, Games with Gold is like a perk of having Xbox Live Gold, which is the Xbox premium subscription service. So that's 60 bucks a year and you get to, you get online multiplayer on your Xbox with some other perks. And one of them is that you get free games every month that um, I think the Xbox 360 games are yours to keep. And I think you don't get access to the Xbox One games if you let your subscription run out. Right. But as long as you're a subscriber, as long as you, quote unquote, bought the game for free when it was free, you have access to it for as long as you stay subscribed. Um, PlayStation has something similar with PlayStation Plus. You get a couple PS4 games every month. Um, and Nintendo, if you have a Nintendo Switch online, which is a lot cheaper, it's $20 a year. Um, you get an, you get access to a collection of Nint- uh, NES and Super NES games. Um, so they're not free, but compared to what you pay for over a year and that you get all the other perks too, they are a nice little bonus, especially if there's a game that you're kind of looking at, but you don't want to pay for a lot of the times that kind of game will be free on PlayStation plus or whatever. Okay. I, th- I thought as much, I thought as much. And you know, th- th- this is common across all the console platforms as, as Ben has explained there. And I think if we're going to get anywhere with, 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 with this podcast and say to you, look, you can game for as little money as possible, as little money as you like, basically. There is lockdowns. There are people taking a lot of time off work due to the um, state of the economy and the state of um, healthcare management. Whatever the reason, you can play games to pass the time and you can spend as much as you like, literally from a penny to hundred dollars and beyond one of the things that i've discovered over the past year or so is google stadia and i signed up to that quite early on arguably earlier than i should have done and <laughs> uh, i got a lovely controller two lovely controllers in fact and i got a chromecast ultra and i got access to the stadia and the first few months were free and then i pay a subscription after that and so many excellent games have come along through that uh, i think it's a six pound monthly subscription it's in that neck of the woods uh with your old games and new games there's a whole bunch of stuff in there and you can buy the games and play them and stream them or you can um get the free monthly games now again this obviously you're paying monthly but this is the key an xbox will cost you 400 dollars or so a stadia beyond the initial outlay for the chromecast ultra will cost you nothing you can subscribe to stadia without having a chromecast ultra and play it through your pc and get console quality graphics and gameplay as long as your laptop or your pc it could be a hundred dollars could be two hundred dollars as long as it's got a decent network connection you've got some great gaming taking place that is beyond the capabilities of your computer because it is happening elsewhere it's happening on a game server and being streamed to you and that is a one example of several streaming services that have been starting up lately there's geforce now uh, there's xbox x cloud there is the new amazon luna service which is us only and there's vortex these are all streaming game services there is no sure, so, big so the, the benefit is that you don't have to outlay all the money to buy the console that's it, it or the gaming right, PC so, or whatever yeah yeah, I think I think that that's it's interesting to come at it from that point because I remember when Stadia was new and I read your your review and your initial experience with it was kind of the first 
way that I heard about Stadia. I was curious what you thought of it because I knew at first you were kind of not super thrilled with it. But I think it, it now that there are a, there is a better collection of games, I think it does make a good option for anyone who doesn't already have a console or a PC and hasn't played a lot of these games if they want to get started for as little money as possible, especially if you already have a Chromecast, it's you know basically free to get started from that point. And I'm looking at the list. I don't know, are Stadia Pro's games, do you get to keep them once they're free or do you have to stay subscribed to play the free games? I believe you have to stay subscribed. Okay, but even just looking at this, I mean, Destiny 2 is a huge game. Celeste is an awesome indie game. Um, Metro is good. All the Steam World games are here. So there's definitely some some solid titles in here for free. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could subscribe for your first month and have a ton of fun with just what's here for free. And I th- yeah, I'm, and that's a great thing as well. And you don't need the controllers either. You can use your, you know, that they are good controllers, but you don't need them to play stage. And that's the other thing. And I can keep talking about stage because you can also play it through um, a number of Android devices as well through the Stadia app. So I could sit here right now. And I could literally just, in fact, I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> I could, on my tablet, I can just open the, uh, it'll ask me for control and it won't let me play, but you, you may hear this. I can load up Stadia on my tablet. And this is a Samsung Galaxy tablet, but I could do the same on my phone. It'll uh, ask me where I want to play. So I'll select Family Room TV or, or this device. And then I will choose a game to play and it will launch. And it's as simple as that. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't get and, and to play like bit high quality games, it doesn't really get any easier compared to having to you know build a PC, which isn't very beginner friendly a lot of the time, and worry about that and build a collection up. That is pretty nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's really good. And you can take it with you, and obviously it's gonna you, you can take it with you, but you probably don't want to because you're gonna kill your mobile internet connection or the internet connection of whoever whoever's house you're visiting sure sure but as long as you've got a good internet connection at home and i think it i think it runs well on anything over 20 megabits per second mine's a 60 meg connection so i don't usually have any concerns unless you know everyone's at home one saturday night streaming a movie um all all around the area and uh, yeah it's 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 really good i'm very pleased with it and it it it, it gives me enthusiasm for the other streaming services because I think a few years ago I wasn't that impressed by the idea of streamed gaming, but now I think it's, I think it's good. I think it can be, I think it has the potential to revolutionise gaming. It may not be through Stadia, but too early to say. Yeah, you know, I dare say Microsoft and uh, Sony have something to say on that. Yeah, I do think it's interesting to see where it goes. I don't think it's for me personally, but I, from what you've said about Stadia and how Xbox Game Pass next generation is going to include um, game streaming to Android, I think at no additional cost. Like That's really cool too. I think the, the, aside from streaming, it's kind of moving in the direction of, excuse me, when you own a game, you can play it anywhere that you want, You know, any, any device that you have, which is a cool side effect too, which over time, I guess, kind of drops the price of gaming down too, right? Because you're not having to spend as much money to buy, you know, if you like a game and then you want to get it on your Switch to take it on the go, you got to buy it twice compared to if you own it, you can play it on your Xbox or your Android phone or whatever with streaming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, streaming is another option and the startup costs are really low for it because you're not buying any new hardware you can if you want to but it's not necessary i think a lot of people like retro gaming and we could talk about retro gaming and we we, we would basically be talking about a completely different podcast there but i know um you mentioned the switch online nes and snes collections um tell me a bit more about that because i'm a bit of a retro gaming no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nintendo Switch Online, just ba- the basics, it's the same thing as PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold. It's required to play games online. You get cloud backups and stuff too. But yeah, the NES and SNES collection, um, Nintendo added that as a perk a little bit ago, and they slowly roll out new games in both of those collections. So let me, um, I don't know all the games off the top of my head, but they added they were adding them every month, and then they kind of slowed it down. To be honest, it's been a little bit too slow, I think, for how old these games are and how easily they were to access on the Wii U. Um, so yeah, are they bringing uh, out Switch... one at a time, or are they bringing out groups of games at a time? 
like it launched with like a dozen or 20 or, or something like that. And then they've rolled out like two a month. I think for a while they were doing like two Super Nintendo and two NES. Um, right now there's maybe like 30 Super Nintendo games and like 50 NES games maybe. Obviously Super Nintendo games are a little more advanced. Um, yeah, but there, there's some omissions. But I mean there's some good titles on Super Nintendo just looking at the list. Um, Super Metroid's great. Super Mario World is awesome um yoshi's island donkey kong country one uh kirby superstar zelda a link to the past so there's some great games on mm-hmm. there um it's not there's some filler especially on the nes that aren't great games so it doesn't have every great title so you, you're missing like chrono trigger um comes to mind but yeah there's some there's some good games on there and it has a couple of modern features too so both of them let you um it has multi, if the game has multiplayer, you can play multiplayer on your Switch. Um, it has save states. It has a rewind feature, so you can easily go back 10 seconds if you screw something up or cool. whatever. Um, and there's, I think there's different modes where you can change, like to make it look like it's on an old CRT oh, monitor. Wow. So, yeah, it's a it's a decent way to play those games, um, and it doesn't cost you anything more. And 20 bucks a year for Switch Online is a third the price of wow. what it costs on PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live. Yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. Um, a couple of weeks ago on um, Steam, there um, they, they had a sale. I can't remember what they called it. I don't think October sale was it, but autumn. It might be an autumn sale, and they had Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics on Steam, and you basically got fifty-eight games for I think under ten dollars. I think it worked out at like five or six pounds in the UK. It was ridiculously cheap, and there were some top titles in there um, from from Days of Your Sonic, the Golden Axe, um, all, all the big Sega names. From, from the old days so um, again an, another thing about this is gaming cheaply is um keep your eye out for the bargains so steam have sales regularly there are there, there are other gaming games focused uh, online stores that give games away there is um there's i was thinking of a different one at the moment but there's epic isn't it which has been giving away like a yep. game a week lately Yep, Epic Games Store, which you have to have to play Fortnite on PC, and you know they have their own other published games. But yeah, they give away. I don't know. I don't know if it's monthly or what, but they have regular games that are free to keep. You know, as long as you again buy. I'm. You have to go in and say yes, I want this game, and then check yeah. out. But it doesn't cost anything. That's why I'm saying buy in quotes. But as long as you buy the game when it's free, it's yours to keep. Yeah. Um, Another really good one, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, is the Humble Bundle. Of course, um, they've yeah. been around for years. So Humble now has its own store where you can buy PC games. But their flagship product is the Humble Bundle where they offer a bunch of games in one um, bundle and you you name your price. So you can pay anything and you get a, a certain number of games. But then if you pay at least a certain amount or if you beat the average price – um, you get more games unlocked. So it's kind of like a pay what you want thing yeah. and you can choose how much of the money that you pay goes to the developers and, and they, they send some of it to charity too. So that's a great way to get older games all together in a bundle. And like you... Christian was saying about the, uh, the Sega Genesis collection too. I mean, there's, that's pretty common for game for there to be collections of older games. And when you think of it that way, the price per game is way lower. Yeah. There's the, the, the Mega Man collection or other games one's coming yeah, to mind too so well, yeah um i'll give you a quick rundown of the games that have been on epic games recently football manager 2020 amnesia as tez grand theft auto 5 so now i've got like six copies of grand theft auto 5 um <laughs> who hasn't hyperlight drifter into the breach kingdom come deliverance um an expansion pack new lands mutant year zero something pathway rocket league pick Kuniku, Roller Coaster Tycoon Complete, Watch Dogs 2. There's a whole ton of games on there. It's absolutely... I'm, I'm pretty sure these are weekly at the moment. So it must be going really well for them to sort of keep up just throwing games at people for free. Yeah, and, and most of these are a couple of years old. But I mean, well, there's some... Football in, Manager in, 2020 in came of... out this, this time last year. Yeah, and, and some of those games, too, are really meaty. I mean, Grand Theft Auto Five or Watch Dogs 2 you easily have... I mean, Grand Theft Auto Five more so, but yeah, at least 30, 40, 50 hours of, of gameplay. Well, yeah, so I mean, you can spend your life playing Football phones. Manager 2020. Yeah. I mean, there's people that have been playing Football Manager 97, well, Championship Manager as it was at the time, um, but the same developers, 97, 98. They've been playing it through, they're still playing it. 
Yeah, if you're the kind of person that gets a lot of mileage out of one game, then that type of thing could be all you need. <laughs> totally. Totally. That's all you need. That's all you need. Um, wow. I, I, by, and we have talked about a lot of games. We've talked about a lot of gaming um, platforms and streaming systems and um, online um, uh, digital delivery systems like um, like the Epic Games and Stream. So, you know, there's a lot going on in this kind of conversation this takeaway should still be that you can game for as little or as much as you like on pretty much any device really um ben do you think there's anything we've missed i'm trying to think i mean we focused a lot on free i mean i think another thing that's good to do is don't forget about sales too like christian yeah. mentioned the steam sale but um there are a lot of great tools like um ps4 ps price tracker i think is one of them or ps prices i'm sorry where you can add games that you want to buy on the store and then it'll you can tell it to send you an email or whatever when the price drops down so that's a great way if there's a game you really want but you just don't want to spend over 20 bucks or whatever on it you add it to your list and then just let the site do the work for you so you're not having to check all the time um that's a great way to do yeah. that or add the game to your wish list on Steam. And like we said, Steam has sales like at least four times a year. Um, so that stuff's not free, free, but it's way cheaper than buying games brand new. Another option too, we forgot about this on the low end is renting games. Um, not nearly as popular as it used to be. but wow. um, I can't remember the last the, time I rented a game. Yeah, it's, it's it, it, I wrote an article about it years ago, and it was more prevalent then. But the two big options that come to mind now, um, I don't know if this is in the UK or not, but there's Redbox in the US, which is um, a movie rental service. It's usually outside of like grocery stores and drug stores. Um, their whole thing is like you, you rent a physical disc. Uh, it's like a dollar a night or two dollars a night. And then you bring it back to any Redbox the next day, and they only charge you for the one day. They have games you can rent. Um that's more for like a one-off thing though. Mm -hmm. There's another service called Gamefly that's a website subscription um, and you pay them a monthly fee and you can pick any game from their library and they'll send it to you and you keep it as long as you want to play it. So that's a good way to like, if you want to play some of the latest games but you don't want to pay full price for them every time, that's a great service if you tend to like quickly play through the game and then you want to play something else. Um, yeah, this yeah, is obviously. weird because this is something that I did and I've completely forgotten about the whole thing of renting games. This was particularly, this was kind of a big thing in the days of um, cartridges. Yeah, yeah, that was, I, I have, I don't know if we ever rented games when I was a kid, but I remember going to Blockbuster and renting yeah. videotapes. Yeah. Um, like the games were, you know, they had cartridges on the shelf, you just picked them up. I think it's gotten less prevalent now because digital delivery of yeah. games is so common obviously was, but I, I did it once or twice but it's something that never really took off for me because i was i didn't i i kind of abhor, as soon as i saw games for rent i just abhorred the idea of games for rent it just did not compute with me at all because i was somebody who liked to go into a computer shop spend some time looking at the boxes looking at the box art and buy the game so the idea that someone could just walk in to a shop and pay like five pounds for the game overnight it, it just it made absolutely no sense to me. It didn't feel like the proper engagement with the game that was going to be there. You know, they might have had it. They might have paid for a week in the end. You know, they might have got overcharged and just kept playing it and playing it and playing it. They might have completed it by the time the next day. But it didn't feel as if that the correct level of engagement with the game was there. But I could make exactly the same argument for DVDs, and CDs, or even go back to LPs and album art. So I'm going to leave it there because I could. That could be another podcast on its own. Me whinging about yeah. the fact that we don't get album art these days. Unless you oh, use... yeah. I love album art. Yeah. I, I have my Spotify sidebar maximized in size because I like to see the album art. Sure. And I, I like to scroll through my albums. I'm the same way. Yeah, I'm the same way with renting games, though. I mean, I'm looking at Gamefly. It's the, their budget plan is the cheapest one. It's after the, the introductory period. It's nine bucks a month. And then their standard plan is 16 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I... I like to own games. I guess I'm, I don't know if, I, if that's old school or not, but like for a game, it's different. Cause to me, like I'll rent movies digitally because after I watch it once, unless I love the movie, I probably won't want to watch it again for a while. Mm -hmm. But with a game, especially a multiplayer game, it's like when I buy it, I want to have it yeah. to play it when I want to play it. Yeah. You know? So for me, I think renting a game makes the most sense. If you just want to try a bunch of different games, complete them quickly, and then you don't care about playing them again versus like we were talking about with, 
epic games, free games, like sinking your teeth into one or two titles. So, but it's an option. It's cheaper than, you know, doing that's cheaper than buying brand new games every time they come out. So, yeah, sure. Um, another one to watch out for is um, GOG.com, which was formerly Good Old Games. They also have uh, free games available from time to time as well. And yeah. They're not just old games anymore. They're also new indie games. Yeah, there's a lot. Steam is like is what you'll think of when you if you play games on PC. But there's a lot of other stores, and a lot of yeah. them, like we're saying, have great deals and alternative practices or whatever that make them worth a look. So, yeah, yeah, okay. Now is probably a good time for us to kind of summarize what we've said, um, which is basically you can pay as much or as little as you like to play video games on virtually any device. It's something that I've repeated several times throughout this podcast because it really is that easy. And if you have time to kill this year or wherever you are right now and you have time to kill, those games, they're free or they're very affordable. And there's a very small uh, onboarding charge in terms of hardware. You could be just playing a top quality game on a cheap tablet, a cheap laptop, for free, or for under a pound, or, or for free. You could pay $100, you could pay $10, you could pay whatever you want. You can pretty much find the gaming experience that you want, that you desire, for the budget that you want to play, because games are everywhere these days. In fact, I, I've long wanted to write my own video game, and I'm... I, there won't be much writing from me into beyond the terms of dialogue, but I used to use a tool called Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit a long time ago on the Commodore 64, and I would make endless shoot 'em ups, obviously, closing the name. Um, and there's there's no way I would be able to learn the skills necessary to code from scratch, but I would I would love the opportunity to just put something together again uh, in those terms and have the time to be able to do it and you know form form a game using a construction kit. And just, you know, just distribute it. Don't want any money for it. Just have fun. Just have, like, a, a, a good bit of shooting around fun, basic gaming. But there's so much gaming out there. It feels like there is actually nowhere to put your game because there's always someone doing a game. There's even people... We were talking about retro games earlier briefly, and I just mentioned an old platform. There's retro gaming this, that happens now. There's new games coming out on old platforms. So you know, there, there's literally nowhere to bring out a new game. And it's how that basically underlines that the games that you want are out there and you can pretty much pay whatever you want. Yeah, I think I mean, it's, it's, that, that's the really, I think one of the great things about gaming overall and like on the high end, you know, you can go crazy and build a super powerful PC and max everything out and spend thousands of dollars on all the equipment or on the low end, you can do everything we talked about. So it's it's definitely a hobby that's all about choice. You know, it's, you don't have to have a high barrier to entry if you're not worried about all that stuff. Yeah, I, I think that's what it comes down to: your budget and what you, the experience that you want from gaming. If you just want to have fun, a fun gaming experience that engages you, that's memorable. You don't necessarily need to have like sixty plus frames per second and crazy crazy hertz monitor displays and the, the latest $200 controllers that will predict your next move or whatever. You can just just play and you can do it for whatever level of budget you have. Uh, that brings us to the end of this week's really useful podcast from makeuseof.com. We are the tech podcast for technophobes and you will find us pretty much anywhere you find podcasts check the show notes for the things that we've been talking about this week and it's goodbye from me christian corley and goodbye from me ben hope everyone uh, enjoyed this episode and go enjoy some great games absolutely until next time it's goodbye take care <laughs>